with the launch one after another of the suborbital flights of Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin, respectively, of Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos. There has been a lot of uh, online and offline conversations around how society should look at these initiatives, positively or negatively. They do represent a good example to evaluate the interactions and the implications of allocating private wealth, of driving common policy. And that is what we are going to talk about today. My name is David Orban, and this is The Context, Season 4, Episode 7. Space exploration is fascinating, and for many decades, it was the exclusive purvey of nation-states. With the end of the Cold War, uh, when the Soviet Union on one side and uh, the United States on the other um, agreed to collaborate on the uh, next generation uh, space uh, station, the uh, ISS, uh, space tourism started. Uh, not right away, uh, but for many years, uh, American entrepreneurs, I remember specifically talking to Bert Rutan, uh, the uh, inventor of the uh, space uh, plane uh, today we call Virgin Galactic, uh, was complaining that the Russians were better capitalists than uh, the Americans because you could buy a ticket to space from them uh, and you couldn't buy it uh, from NASA. For many years, uh, you could spend uh, between 10 and 20 million dollars and then the Russians doubled the price to, to 40 million dollars and more uh, in order to go to space and uh, spend about a week on the International Space Station after a year's training in uh, Baikonur, uh, Kazakhstan. Now, this was done overall by very few people. Uh, one of them, the uh, uh, Hungarian-American uh, entrepreneur uh, George uh, Somogy uh, actually went twice. Uh, but uh, uh, in total, uh, a handful of people. However, a little more than uh, 10 years ago, um, the effort started to develop uh, companies besides the prime contractors of the uh, nation states space organizations, Boeing and Lockheed uh, on uh, the American side, uh, Roscosmos uh, uh, on the, and Energia on the Russian side. And these uh, private companies uh, were aiming to uh, do more than launch satellites. They were aiming to bring space travel to many, many more people. Hundreds, thousands, possibly millions, or why not billions of people. SpaceX is on the side in this because rather than space tourism, uh, part of the fundamental mission of SpaceX is colonizing Mars. And whether they will succeed or not, it definitely means that they will not uh, get distracted by uh, bringing people in uh, short uh, entertainment rides. On the other hand, it is very much part of Virgin Galactic's and Blue Origin's uh, business model. 
both are a particular type of space company uh, that uh, rather than uh, bringing people or satellites in orbit, at least for the moment, uh, achieve the trajectories that do not complete an orbit around Earth or more, uh, but uh, after going up for about 100 kilometers, they immediately go down and then land respectively uh, Virgin uh, Galactic as a, as a plane uh, on a runway and uh, Blue Origin uh, with the more traditional uh, parachutes as far as the uh, capsule bringing the human uh, is concerned uh, and uh, the uh, rocket thruster in the case of Blue Origin uh, is capable of uh, vertical landing. So one of uh, the questions uh, around it is whether the billionaires funding these companies should do something else. And a lot of people complaining about the fact that uh, this money is uh, wasted and it should be uh, instead invested uh, in eradicating hunger or poverty, in my opinion, uh, have a complex relationship uh, that, that uh, is, is very important to explore, uh, but they haven't completed at least their exploration around these topics. Certainly, uh, hunger and poverty and, and women's rights and a thousand other very important um, challenges in, in today's society around the world deserve attention. And uh, yes, these deserve attention from billionaires uh, as much as from people who have maybe no money, but a lot of passion to give, a lot of talent to dedicate to solving these. And they can be entrepreneurs, they can be investors, they can be teachers and educators, policymakers, or people uh, who have uh, the muscle power of uh, digging a well in, in Africa and coordinating the effort on the ground. Um, now, the principle of a given group of people telling another group of people what they should or shouldn't do uh, is um, a, a, a very old uh, principle. And uh, depending on uh, the number uh, of uh, the first or the second group, uh, well, it is in any case a kind of a dictatorship. So I am of the opinion that uh, we can um, make certain goals and certain efforts popular. And by making them popular, uh, they will attract the attention of a lot of people they will attract resources and hopefully they will be solved. Hunger, for example, uh, in most places in the world today is solved. Whenever there is hunger is not a question of a lack of food. It is a question of uh, lack of appropriate logistics, uh, lack of appropriate policy, uh, or actually the destruction wrote uh, in a region by civil war and uh, the consequences in the uh, destruction of crops and disruption in uh, uh, transporting the crops from where they grow for, uh, to where they must be eaten. Uh, now, the people who complain about billionaires misspending uh, their money have a very powerful tool. If they live in a democracy, they should elect uh, representatives who approve legislation to tax the billionaires 
and then the money appropriated by the state through taxation can be dedicated to uh, those uh, challenges that these people feel are deserving rather than based on the individual and independent decision of those billionaires. The other immediately available uh, opportunity that each of these people have obviously uh, is just rolling up their sleeves and dedicating their lives to solving those issues that are very dear to them. Now, even in those cases, by the very definition or the very description of what I just mentioned, dedicating their lives to uh, a goal, well, they will make choices as well. For example, uh, they will dedicate themselves to women's rights, which will necessarily ignore the plight of hungry, poor males. Now, I am exaggerating, obviously. But what I want to highlight is that uh, each of us decide, each of us listen, each of us learn, and we go on our journeys. Now, the question of whether these initiatives of space tourism are worth it is a question that is easily answered by the market. And on the surface, it would look like that these are going to be lucrative businesses. Both Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin have received a lot of bookings from people who want to experience weightlessness, who want to be able uh, to be in the, as of now, still very exclusive cl class of astronauts, even though earning it uh, from a, a very cozy and comfy uh, voyage uh, of, let's say, half an hour at most, uh, rather than uh, through a year-long uh, grueling training in, in, uh, in uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, uh, or um, an entire life dedicated to becoming an astronaut or a cosmonaut of the old style, of the old definition. Uh, so, we don't know um, for how long uh, uh, Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos will fund uh, their uh, hobby uh, of uh, space. Uh, both can afford uh, that for uh, a long time for sure and uh, uh, whether uh, the companies will become public maybe uh, so that we can look uh, at uh, their books more in detail understanding if they are profitable or not for now certainly uh, they are not profitable they are losing billions and billions of dollars uh, and then the Next question is, is this something that will have possibly, uh, regardless of this short-term evaluation of the market, some positive impact on uh, the world in general? So, the uh, question of uh, a technological um, progress that derives from uh, these kinds of uh, endeavors is undoubtedly uh, positive. It, it, the answer is known. Uh, these kinds of uh, research and development uh, bring innovation that uh, spreads out. Um, the ability to launch uh, and then land uh, rockets is huge for many different kinds of uh, initiatives. Uh, imagine uh, the possibility of rapidly delivering not a missile uh, with an atomic bomb, but uh, uh, some dearly needed supplies uh, in a remote region um, in a matter of hours uh, anywhere on the planet. That is what now we can do uh, with uh, rockets that land uh, vertically. Um, imagine 
uh, what uh, we can achieve uh, with uh, the ability to bring um, in uh, uh, microgravity experiments uh, that um, cost a uh, hundred thousand uh, dollars rather than millions. Um, so many applications in, in so many different uh, areas. And yes, there will be a lot of people who will jump on the opportunity of uh, taking advantage of this infrastructure that is being built, uh, not for space tourism, but for other uh, types of initiatives. The uh, last question is, uh, if you care about space exploration, if these are part of what we would call space exploration. And the answer there is today, absolutely not. They are not part of it. They are not pushing it forward. Uh, there, I would say that uh, uh, the uh, agencies of nation states have a clear advantage. Uh, if you want uh, to design and launch uh, a, a probe uh, to uh, and the next uh, planet or a farther planet or study a comet uh, or an asteroid, uh, you will uh, definitely need the resources of uh, the space agency of the United States, Russia, China, India, Japan, uh, the European Space Agency, and well, probably not many more. Uh, even though uh, the number is increasing, uh, the United Arab Emirates uh, launched uh, uh, deeper space uh, uh, exploration uh, missions recently as well. SpaceX, if successful uh, with its Starship initiative will have certainly demonstrated the ability to push the boundaries into deep space exploration at the same level as the national space agencies. And uh, alongside uh, their mission of colonizing Mars, at that point, they will be able to decide what else to do. They already said that Starship will also implement earthbound transportation networks. And these are very likely to profoundly impact, if not even destroy, intercontinental airplane uh, modes of transportation. Uh, but they can also decide to uh, start exploring asteroids and uh, other planets, uh, and we will see. In my opinion, the debate that has been born after the flights of Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin is useful. The policy of uh, diminishing wealth inequality uh, should be done before the fact and not after the fact. Uh, now that uh, these billionaires have uh, these resources available and they decided to dedicate some of uh, these resources to uh, build their uh, space uh, uh, programs uh, for tourism and more, I still believe that it is a net positive. And uh, I congratulate Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin for uh, their success. And I'm looking forward to see uh, what the next steps uh, are going to be. I am personally very passionate about space and uh, I am happy that there are new initiatives alongside uh, those that we already know of nation states and SpaceX that are successful and successfully pushing the boundaries of what we can achieve.